Hello and a warm welcome to Personal Finance. I'm Kukule Tutele. So you've taken out life insurance. That's hopefully to ensure that uh, your family will be well provided for should the worst happen. But have you provided your insurer with a list of beneficiaries? If not, this could lead to significant headaches for your family in trying to claim back the money. Well, to give us perspective on this and why this theme is quite significant is Peter Dempsey, the Deputy CEO of the Association for Savings and Investments in South Africa, commonly referred to as ASISA. Peter, good to have you with us today from our Cape Town studios. And let's pick up on this major theme. Uh, first of all, for many South Africans to actually have life insurance is a positive step in the right direction. But why is it so critical to have a list of beneficiaries? Uh, Google Eater, thank you. The, the, the real issue is that if you have an insurance policy and uh, it pays out in the event of your death, in the absence of having a beneficiary nomination, the proceeds will pay into your estate. Uh, now, that in itself is not a bad thing, but there are some uh, implications around that. So, for example, if your proceeds pay into your estate, uh, your estate will in all likelihood take some time to be wound up, go through the legal process before the assets can be distributed to the people who do to get them. So that can be anything from six months to 12 months to even 24 months. So the proceeds of your life insurance policy actually get paid into the estate uh, and it'll, it'll remain there until such time as, as the estate has been wound up. Uh, the other thing to consider is that typically when there's a death, the person who passes away's bank accounts uh, are frozen and one can't access whatever money might have been in that account and this is where the benefits of the life insurance policy are effectively lost because it gets paid into the estate, you can't access the bank account uh, and the benefit of the proceeds of the insurance policy are actually pended for however long it takes to uh, resolve and finalise the estate. What if you have a uh, relationship or you have uh, elected who the executor of your estate will be? Does that not uh, change the scenario at all? Unfortunately, it doesn't. Um, the fact that you may have uh, an executor whom you know doesn't change the fact that the assets are put into, uh, in a sense, into limbo while the estate's been wound up. Now, if it's a simple estate, it is possible to make application uh, to the executor, which must be approved by the Master of the Supreme Court that there could be monies paid out to provide for uh, ongoing maintenance. But this is not a simple thing and it's not a guaranteed thing. So it's, it's really much wiser to ensure that you have a beneficiary nominated. Uh, just at, at a simple other benefit is that with the insurance policy proceeds, if it's a clean uh, cause of death, so there isn't, for example, suicide or crime or anything like that involved, these proceeds will pay out within anything between one and three days. Uh, and they don't go via the estate. So one of the benefits is you don't actually pay executor's fees uh, on that money. Everything else that goes into the estate is subject to executor's fees uh, for the administration role that the executor fills. So to sketch it f for the listeners, if you had, or the viewers, if you had a, a, an insurance policy which paid out, the estate can be frozen in, this, in the sense that the, the, the accounts are frozen. The estate can take some time to wind up. In the meantime, with the beneficiary nomination, the spouse or whoever the beneficiary is, has access within a day or two to money, which allows them to keep the family going and to pay off any of the things that need to be paid, the ongoing uh, expenses and maybe uh, accounts and things that need to be settled. So it really is a sensible thing to do to put a beneficiary nomination on all your policies. Mm. What about for those individuals who have actually taken out life insurance to cover their mortgage bonds? Are there any particular implications there, Peter? Yes, there are. So uh, typically what would happen is you, you have two ways that, that this is dealt with. The one is you simply take out an insurance policy uh, and you would cede uh, that policy to the bank. And what that would mean is that in the event of your death, the proceeds would pay to the bank. Uh, the bank would then recoup whatever the outstanding mortgage is and whatever's left of the, of the proceeds, if anything, would then be paid back into your estate. So effectively, you have in a sense the same problem, mm. except that the, the mortgage is paid off. Uh, there are some instances where people say, look, I'd rather pay the proceeds uh, to my beneficiary 
and the bank would then have to wait until the estate is wound up to get paid out or the beneficiary could use part of the proceeds to settle the mortgage. So that's another way of, of, of doing it. Mm. Keeping in line with selecting a beneficiary, I understand you mentioned it's quite critical to bear in mind that beneficiaries need to be 18 years and older. Otherwise, this also leads to some legal complications with minors. Guguleta, indeed, yes. Uh, it, it's interesting. There have been some, uh, some cases that I'm aware of where um, an individual had, and seeing that it's, uh, it's August, uh, this particular case also was, in fact, a woman who had in, uh, life insurance, uh, which was due to pay out to her minor children. Uh, she unfortunately passed away. The children were under the age of 18. The father, from whom she was divorced, is the legal guardian of the children, which meant that the proceeds of her insurance policy actually cannot be paid to beneficiaries who are under the age of 18 and the proceeds were paid to the guardian, which in fact is the ex-spouse. Uh, and he is responsible for using those proceeds to look after the children. But you can imagine in a situation where there was a divorce, where he was uh, clearly not a very, uh, uh, a very good father, the chances that the money could be squandered and used for other purposes is very high. It is therefore very, very important that if your children are under the age of 18, and you want them to become the beneficiary in terms of your life insurance policy, you need to specify in your will that on your death uh, a trust is created uh, and that the proceeds of the insurance policy are paid into the trust for the beneficiary of the children until they reach the age of 18 or 21. Uh, otherwise your proceeds could go in fact to the wrong person. And that also leads to a critical element ensuring that you actually review and consistently update uh, the list of beneficiaries that you have. Would that be accurate? It is. Um, I think it's, it's, it's very sensible to, uh, to have a review annually of, of your financial affairs, which is uh, quite wide ranging. It would include your financial plan, it would include your will. Uh, part of your financial planning review should also be your beneficiaries to check that they are up to date. I can just mention, I, I was also, I am aware of a case where a husband and wife got divorced uh, and the, the beneficiary nomination wasn't changed and when uh, the one party passed away, the ex-spouse actually got paid out the proceeds. So it is very important to review annually who your beneficiaries are, are they still the right people, are they updated, are your children under the age of 18? And this is part of your overall review process which uh, is often best facilitated using a good financial planner who can assist you with this. Mm. I'm glad you mentioned that element because we always advocate, uh, advocate rather for uh, efficient professional advice on this channel. Uh, and take us to that conversation with our financial planners and advisors. Are there key critical conversations and questions we need to bring up in our consultations with them regarding uh, uh, life cover and ensuring that uh, our beneficiaries have been noted? Uh, Google it. I think they are. I think it starts off with a, a conversation that says, in the event of my death or disability now, unexpectedly, how much would I need to ensure that in the event of death, my family's lifestyle and financial well-being is taken care of? So how much cover do I need? Uh, and this is, a, this is often a target which, which goes up and down. So it might be that your cover needs to be supplemented because you, for example, had another child in the meantime. Uh, you should also ask the question, what would happen if I was disabled tomorrow and I lost my income, how would my family cope given the fact that I'm still around uh, and I still need to be cared for? So how much cover do we need to ensure that that is taken care of? So those are two sort of starting off points. Then part of that discussion also is about beneficiaries. Uh, are they the right people? Are they up to date? Uh, and, and I think also part of that discussion is to uh, make sure that, that the, the list of key people that need to be contacted in the event of an emergency is listed. Financial advisor would be one. Uh, perhaps the executor of your, of your will would be another. Uh, and also where all your documents are. So that in the event of something happening, your family, your loved ones, have got a place to go to start. Otherwise, they scramble around unsure of where to go, whether you have life cover, don't have life cover. So those are the sorts of things that I think one should, which should discuss with the advisor. And the advisor should give you a summary 
of all your financial investments, where they are, which company they're with, uh, and this should be shared with, with, your, with your loved ones. Indeed, Peter, we've certainly said quite a bit. Let's get a quick recap now of some of the key themes from this evening's discussion. Uh, life insurance is a critical part of financial planning. Uh, in South Africa, more than 99% of all underwritten claims are paid, so uh, it's not as though you're wasting your money. The claims are paid. Uh, having beneficiaries on your, on your insurance policies is a key part of making the policy work. Uh, using your advisor on an annual basis to review your circumstances and ensure that they're up to date uh, is a key part of sticking to your plan. And maybe the last point is involve your family in these discussions. Tell them that they cared for, how they cared for, and that it gives them comfort as well. That in the event of a lost one, of a loved one being lost, uh, tough as that is, that life will still continue for them. Peter, thank you so, so much for those uh, solid uh, uh, thoughts with regard to how to take this conversation further, further, especially with family as well as a financial advisor. Well, that's how we wrap it up for tonight's conversation, taking a look at the importance of highlighting the beneficiaries of your life insurance policy. And that's where we leave it for this evening. A big thank you once more to Peter Dempsey, the Deputy CEO of ASISA, that's the Association for Savings and Investments in South Africa. Remember that we want to hear from you, so share your thoughts and feedback with us. Tweet us at CNBC Africa using the hashtag Finance410 or to myself at Gokum Fupi. Until next time, have a wonderful evening.